Welcome student, uh, the first lecture of electrical circuit analysis. I am Hiran Kirala from Gyan Manjari Institute of Technology, Bhavnagar. Currently, I am working as an assistant professor in electrical engineering department. Now, today we are going to discuss about the sinusoidal steady state analysis. So, before going to start our today's talk, which is basically on the what is the sinusoids, let me just give you a brief history on a war that is between two arguments and that war was not fought with a weapon but uh, that was a war that fought with thoughts or the arguments and those arguments were which one is superior so the AC is superior or the DC is superior okay so it is the story uh, about uh, in 90s maybe somewhere around 1890 so there is some complex between ac is superior or the dc is superior and after so many argument the conclusion has been made that the ac is superior than dc now there are some strong argument on ac that is why this con conclusion has been made the first one is the generation of power is basically done in the form of ac that is why ac is superior the another most important uh, argument is that the transform transformation or the transmission of ac power is causing less losses than dc power and that is why the ac is superior so in this lecture basically we are talking about a time varying sinusoidal signal either it is a voltage signal or a current signal which is going to fade to any electrical circuit then how is the behavior of the circuit okay but in today's lecture we are going to stick with what is sinusoids okay now the sinusoid time varying excitation means the excitation which is given in the form of a sinusoidal okay so if any circuit is given by a sinusoidal time varying excitation it means we are giving the excitation in the form of a sinusoid so the question will be what is the sinusoid the sinusoid is a signal that has the form of sine or the cosine function and we all are familiar with sine or cosine function let me just draw a waveform of a sine function so here it is our time axis let me just uh, assume that this is the voltage signal which is changing with respect to time and the shape of sinusoidal signal is something like this uh, here you can see the 0 pi and 2 pi so this is the fundamental sinusoidal signal now a sinusoidal current reverses at the regular time intervals so for half of the cycle the value is positive and for the other half of the cycle the value will be negative so if such kind of signal is given to any kind of circuit either it is a voltage signal or the current signal such kind of system or the circuit is known as a ac circuit now some of the characteristics of ac circuit we need to keep in mind that is its characteristics is sinusoidal okay the second point is a sinusoidal signal is easy to generate as well as transmission is also easy because the power loss happening in a AC transmission is less with respect to a DC transmission. It is the form of voltage that is generated throughout the world and that is why uh, this is the one of the strongest argument why the AC is superior. Okay. The, through Fourier analysis, any practical periodic signal can be represented by the sum of the sinusoidal. So this is the uh, one of the complex thing that we have to understand and that we'll discuss in future. So keep in mind that the one of the another advantage of a sinusoidal is that it is easy to handle mathematically. 
so what does it mean so the derivation or the integration of sinusoidal it is also a sinusoid so if we talk the derivation of sin it is cos the derivation of cos it will be minus sin so if you do the integration the result will be same so derivation of sinusoidal signal is also sinusoidal signal hence we can say that the sinusoidal is extremely important function as far as circuit analysis is concerned okay so when time varying sinusoidal excitation is given to any system the behavior of the system can be found out very easily okay now let us discuss one of the simplest example of a sinusoidal function let's say the voltage excitation is given to any system and that is defined as v of t is equal to vm sin omega t here you can see that the behavior of the signal is sinusoidal now here what is vm so vm is nothing but the maximum value or the peak value or the amplitude of the signal what is omega t omega t is nothing but the angle and unit of omega t is degree but what is omega omega is nothing but the angular frequency and it is generally expressed in terms of radian per second okay now let me show you one figure here you can see that the value of voltage which is v that depends on the value of t so as omega t is changing the value of t varies accordingly now let's say when value of omega t is zero at that point sin zero will be zero so v of t is equal to zero so we are talking about this point now when value of omega t is equal to pi by 2 at the time sin pi by 2 is equal to 1 and the value of v of t will be vm only we are talking about this point the same way you can find for omega t is equal to pi 3 pi by 2 2 pi and so on you will get this kind of a periodic sinusoid now what do you mean by periodic signal it means that signal repeat itself after some duration how much duration here omega t is equal to 2 pi after that signal repeat itself you can see that from 0 to 2 pi you can see the uh, waveform or the shape as a sinusoidal after 2 pi to 4 pi again you can uh, say, see that uh, the signal repeat itself so it can be observed that the signal repeat itself after omega t time okay now as far as time has concerned so the your voltage waveform versus time graph will something like this and here you can see that after t second after t second the signal repeat itself okay so if you add t plus t and so from t to 2t the signal repeat itself as before so what do you mean by this t t is nothing but known as the period of a sinusoid after that period signal again repeat itself now we have to prove that before that from the previous figure we can say that omega t is nothing but is equal to 2 pi and from this if you just uh, simplify this equation you can find the value of t and that can be expressed as 2 pi by omega so in fact we can see that uh, the signal is a periodic signal and we have to prove that the signal is periodic signal from that we can say that v of t that we have discussed earlier let me just write down again for you v of t is equal to what v of t is equal to vm sin omega t now we are interested to find the value of v at which time at t plus t after one cycle or one period so it will be v of t plus t is equal to now put uh, t is equal to t plus t in this equation so it will be vm sin omega t plus capital t okay now put the value of t from this equation which is 2 pi by omega so if you put that uh, it will be vm sin omega t plus 2 pi by omega now simplify this equation by just multiplying omega into the bracket it will be vm sin omega t plus 2 pi now using simple trigonometric identity you can find the value of sin omega t plus 2 pi okay then it will be vm sin omega t and that is nothing but actually our v of t so here you can find that the value of v at t plus t times it will be same as v of t 
so here we can prove that the signal is a periodic signal because the value of v of t plus t and v of t is equal to is actually same value so we can say that our signal is a periodic signal so generally we can say a periodic signal can be identified or can be defined as the function that specify this particular equation for all the value of t and for all the value of a okay so f of t is equal to f of t plus n multiplied by capital t where n is the all integers so this is more uh, generic term we can define the value of voltage v of t is equal to sin omega t because the signal repeat itself after every time period t now another important definition that is cyclic frequency now what is cyclic frequency so simply we can say if you just take the reciprocal of capital t you will find the frequency so the reciprocal of this quantity is the number of cycle per second okay so f is nothing but the number of cycle per second and actually which is known as a cyclic frequency but generally we just call it is frequency now just put the value of t into the in this equation so already we have derived that t is equal to 2 pi by omega so put 2 pi by omega into i'm sorry this equation and you will get omega is equal to 2 pi f here omega is your angular frequency and that is expressed in radian per second f is the frequency and the unit of frequency is hertz okay now the more general way we can express our sinusoidal signal let's say we are talking about a voltage signal so in previously we have discussed that v of t is nothing but vm sin omega t but now in more general expression we can say that vm sin omega t plus phi this extra phi term is added now what is that phi so phi is nothing but a phase or we can say the phase difference and that is a unit of phi will be the unit of omega is degree or radian so the unit of phi also will be degree or radian only now let me just give you one example here you can see in the figure that uh, our first signal is v1 and it is given by vm sin omega t so here you can see vm sin omega t wave form in a dark line okay now again v2t is equal to vm sin omega t plus phi so here you can see the peak value is same the nature of the signal is sinusoidal the angular frequency is omega t the only difference is plus phi is added it means your second signal and first signal has phase displacement of phi degree that you can see right here there is a phase displacement is about phi degree okay so you can say that your uh, this dotted line is your v2 signal so v2 is leading v1 by phi degree or in other word you can say your v1 is lagging v2 by phi degree okay so that is what we have concluded from previous figure that v2 is therefore said to be lead v1 and both of these are out of phase so if phi is not equal to 0 in that case we can say that v1 and v2 are said to be out of phase let me just draw this figure again for you here is the time axis is yes, voltage v changing with respect to time the v1 is equal to vm sin omega t so this is nothing but v1 v2 is equal to vm sin omega t plus phi okay so this is your v2 the phase displacement between both of this is phi degree okay so from this figure you can see that if phi is not equal to 0 here uh, phi is not equal to 0 so this is we are talking about this case only v1 and v2 are said to be out of phase so both v1 signal and v2 signal are here it is out of phase but when phi is equal to 0 it means that v1 and v2 
are actually starting from the same point then we can say v1 and v2 are said to be in a phase which is either at that time the value of maximum or the maximum value and minimum value will occur at the same time here also when phi is not equal to 0 maximum value and minimum value are same but they are occurring at a different point of time but in case of phi is equal to 0 the value of v1 and v2 will be same and will occur at the same time okay so that is the difference between the Mm, uh, the va value of phi is 0 or not equal to 0 ok so you have to just keep in mind what is the phase displacement when we can call that these two signals are in phase or out of phase ok so here you can see v2 is leading v1 by how much degree 5 degree so a sinusoid can be represented in either sine or in cosine form and one of the advantage of sinusoidal signal is that it can be transformed from one form to another form using a basic trigonometric identities ok so all of you uh, aware about uh, all as tc so in first quadrant all will be plus in second quadrant uh, sine will be plus in third quadrant tan will be plus in fourth quadrant cosine will be plus this all these things you have studied in i think 10th standard so let me just uh, give you uh, very quickly the recap of all these things so if you want to find the value of sine a plus b then it will be sine a multiplied by cos b minus cos a multiplied by sine b now if you want to find a minus b in that case it will be sine a cos b plus cos a sine b same way you can find for cos a plus b and cos a minus b that here it is shown okay that is cos a cos b minus sin a sin b for a minus b it is the sign will be changed here it is minus here it is plus now sometimes you have to find the value of sin omega t plus or minus 180 in that case what should you do just put the value of a is equal to omega t and b is equal to 180 in this equation you can find the value of uh, whatever you want to find omega t plus 180 or omega t minus 180 so here the value of sin omega t plus or minus 180 will be minus sin omega t so it doesn't matter if you take plus or minus the value of sin omega t will be minus sin omega t only same way you can find for cos also and same for cos the value will not going to change if you take plus or minus if you put omega t is equal to a and b is equal to 90 in place of 180 then the value will change so sin omega t plus 90 will be plus cos omega t if you take omega t minus 90 you will get minus cos omega t same you can find for cos plus or minus 90 degree so the fundamental thing is that you have to remember this equation and you can get this equation by putting simply the value of a is equal to omega t and b is equal to whatever the value you want to find into this equation okay so this is simple trigonometric identities i think you are aware of these things so this is all about what is sinusoid in the next lecture we are going to understand the concept of phasor because as far as electrical engineer is concerned the phasor and phasor diagram is very important thing because you can easily express your sinusoidal waveform in the form of a phasor and which is more convenient way to work with either it is a sine function or cosine function because you can easily transform a sinusoidal signal or cosine signal into each other using a basic trigonometric identities so it is all about today's lecture in next lecture we are going to understand phasors and phasor diagram thank you